3.6, more chain rule problems, page 3. Bringing back some old notation, capital D sub x of 4x squared plus 7 squared times an 8x to the 4th plus 3 cubed. This is another product rule. Find the derivative of this mess. There's the first function. There's the second function. And within each of those, there will be a chain rule when we have to do its derivative. All right, so let's just start. First function, 4x squared plus 7 squared times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second, that 3 is coming down in front. Inside staying the same, squared. Decrease that power by 1, so squared. And then times the derivative of its inside, which is 32x cubed. Here's half the product rule. There's the first. That's derivative of the second. Plus the second, 8x to the fourth plus 3 cubed times the derivative of the first. That outside exponent, 2, comes down in front. 4x squared plus 7 to the first. Then times the derivative of the inside, which is an 8x. Cleaning this up a bit over here in this first half, if you will. I have a 3 and a 32. That's 96x cubed and a 4x squared plus 7 squared and an 8x to the 4th plus 3 squared plus second half over here um, 16x and a 4x squared plus 7 to the 1st and an 8x to the 4th plus 3 cubed. All right, we are not done here. We need to factor this. And we look and see what's common. So between a 96 and a 16, we can pull out a 16. Between an x cubed and an x, we can pull out an x. Between a 4x squared plus 7 squared and a 4x squared plus 7, we get a 4x squared plus 7 just to the first. And the last one, 8x to the fourth plus 3 squared and an 8x to the fourth plus 3 cubed, we can pull an 8x to the fourth plus 3 squared. Oh boy. Now, what's left? From this first piece, to get from the 16 to the 96, we need a 6. To get from the x to the x cubed, we need an x squared. To get from a 4x squared plus 7 to the first to a 4x squared plus 7 squared, we'll need a 4x squared plus 7. To get from an 8x to the fourth plus 3 squared, to an 8x to the 4th plus 3 squared, we don't need any of those. There's the first half. Plus, now let's do second half. To get from a 16 to a 16, don't need any of those. x to an x, nope, don't need any of those. 4x squared plus 7 to a 4x squared plus 7, nope, don't need any of those. How about the 8x to the 4th plus 3? From a squared to a cubed, we need just one of them. 8x to the 4th plus 3. All right, cleaning this up, we have 16x, 4x squared plus 7, 8x to the 4th plus 3 squared. In the square brackets here, we have, let's distribute this 6x squared through, we have 24x to the 4th plus 42x squared plus 8x to the 4th plus a 3. Oh, I think we can combine some like terms in here. Don't you love this? The way it all fits together so beautifully. 
I just love this stuff. 24x to the fourth plus an 8x to the fourth is a 32x to the fourth plus a 42x squared plus a 3. Whew! That's it. Yikes. Realistically, on this last factor down here, you should try to factor it. It doesn't, but sometimes that does factor. So if it does factor, you need to factor it. All right. Let's look at the next one. I think the next one is much nicer to deal with. F of x is cotangent of 2x squared minus 1. Find f. Uh-oh. What's that? Yep, double prime. So you have to find the derivative and then the derivative of that. Here we go. Let's find f prime first. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So negative cosecant squared of a 2x squared minus 1 and times the derivative of the inside, which is a 4x. Pulling that 4x around in front, we'll have a negative 4x cosecant squared of 2x squared minus 1. All right, we're going to have to do a derivative of this. So I would take that outside exponent and rewrite this. With that squared on the outside of that cosecant quantity. There's your first derivative. Now we have to do a second derivative. Oh, do you see a product rule hanging around here? First, second, and within this second piece there's a chain rule when we have to do that derivative. Don't quit, just take it piece by piece. F double prime. Notice the notation identifying F prime and once we start taking that second derivative, F double prime. Alright, first function, negative 4x times the derivative of the second. This is the toughest piece, so stay with us. Start on the outside, so pull that 2 down in front, keep its inside alone. to the first times, so we did that, that squared part. Now the next layer in is the cosecant. So we do the derivative of cosecant, which is negative cosecant of 2x squared minus 1 times cotangent of 2x squared minus 1. We did the derivative of the squared part. We did the derivative of the cosecant part. And the last bit then, the derivative of the 2x squared minus 1, that's 4x. Okay, now wait, we filled up the whole line here, but this is only the first part of product rule. That was first times the derivative of the second, plus second cosecant of 2x squared minus 1 squared times, oh this one's fun, the derivative of the first, yes, just a negative 4. Oh boy, let's clean this mess up. Alright, that top line here, all that's product, so let's see if we can figure out what this is. You have a negative 4x times a 2, that's negative 8x, times a negative 1 is positive 8x, times a 4x, 32x squared. And then the cosecants, we have one, two of them. So cosecant squared of 2x squared minus 1 times a cotangent of 2x squared minus 1. That's the first piece. 
And then the second piece is just minus 4 cosecant of 2x squared minus 1. Oh, but that cosecant was squared, so I'm going to squeeze that back up here. Oh, boy. Yes, you could probably go through and factor this, but I'm going to tell you right now, nothing happens. So we are going to stop right there. Aren't you happy? Whew, last one. Hang on. All right, find an equation of the tangent line to y equals 4 tangent 2x at this point, pi over 8, comma, 4. All right, let's start your answer right over here. Here's your tangent line. Y minus, hey, do you know the y value? Sure, it's 4. Equals slope times x minus, do you know the x value? You certainly do. It's pi over 8. Right here is slope. That is y prime at pi over 8. Over to the side, let's figure out what is y prime at x. So we'll have to do the derivative of this. Bring that 4 down. And then tangent of 2x, we did the 4. All right, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared. So this will be secant squared of 2x. And then times the derivative of the inside. So times a 2. And y prime is then 8 secant squared 2x. y prime at pi over 8. Notice the notation. That's 8 secant squared of 2 times pi over 8. And 2 times pi over 8 is pi over 4. So this is 8 secant squared pi over 4. And it might be helpful for you at this point to write it like this. 8 times the secant of pi over 4 squared. And secant pi over 4 is square root 2. And we end up with 16. There's your slope. 16. That wasn't so bad. Thank you for watching.